Okay, I'm back. This is Terry Runyon from terryrunyon.com. I had so many great comments on the last one of these videos I did, I thought I'd try another one. This time I'm not going to be moving my camera around as much. I have a two cameras set up. I got a cat drinking out of my water dishes that I use for painting. I've got my iPhone over my surface where I'm going to paint, and I've got my little webcam here that I'm talking into. And this is my studio. These are some paintings I've done in the past. And now I'm working in watercolor. So I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me. I have no idea yet what I'm going to do. As usual, I'm looking through my Pinterest boards, sketchbook stuff, which I will link to below. When I look through these boards, I get little bits of inspiration. It's almost like I'm looking out of the side of my eye. I can feel something moving. There's energy moving and my part is to pay attention to that energy and kind of move with it. Whatever I'm looking at that seems to be hitting that, that little sweet spot for me is really not as significant as paying attention to that creative spark. That creative spark is happening all the time for all of us. Now we may be thinking about, oh, I can't do that, or this is too hard, or I don't know how to paint. That's a biggie. The other thing I just realized is that you may be watching this video or things I do on YouTube and thinking, wish I could do that. And I know that feeling so well. I worked around a lot of artists for a lot of years, and it was continual sense of comparison that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't measuring up. So I'm just here to tell you, you don't have to spend your life at that. Those thoughts come and go, and what we're doing here is focusing in on that inspiration. When the thoughts come up that we're not gonna be able to do something or some other artist is better than we are, we can just let those thoughts go by. Just don't give them any energy. They really are not moving you in a direction that's, that's enhancing your creativity and the possibility in your moment by moment living. So what we're focusing in on and keep focusing back to is this sense of movement that's happening. I have a little bit of that sense right now in uh, looking at these Pinterest panels. Here's the deal, I can keep looking because I get inspired over and over again just through looking through colors and shapes. And what I realized from my experiences is that I can get to a place where I'm oversaturated. I've let all these inspirations come and go. They, they flown through my awareness and I just keep on researching or keep on looking and I don't move on any of the, the moments of insight, those moments of um, energy that happen and then they just keep happening, right? Well at some point we get full up and then we're exhausted Been breathing in a lot but not breathing out. So what I've done in my life to get around that process that seems to happen with a lot of us is pay attention, like I said, to that moment where that spark happens. If you happen to miss one and you get distracted by another quote unquote shiny object, just realize the next time that happens, I'm just going to move on the next thing. There's all kinds of great things happening all the time, that all this energy is moving all the time. So I don't have to worry about missing something. It'll come around again. So I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm going to turn on my iPhone. Okay, so I've got my iPhone turned on and we're gonna switch back and forth between me talking and the camera over my painting. So once again, I'm gonna work in watercolor. So what I do is I get a lot of paint mixed up over here so that I can really load up my brush. There's a lot of different ways of working. Some artists, creative people, like to work with a dryer brush or they like to do more detailed work with a brush. I'm more the type of person who kind of splashes my stuff around. I like to have a full brush, lots of paint in there, lots of water, kind of go in its own way. I've got a few leaves there. I do want to make some little bases on these too, so I'm going to do that. Let these, the watercolor bleed into the leaf because I enjoy that.
So I'm going to continue painting. I'm really liking the vase there, and so I'm going to continue on with that. And I like to vary my shapes so that they're not all the same, just to keep it a little more interesting. There's also not varying shapes, and that can work too. So there's no hard and fast rules around this. almost looking like a butterfly plant here. Sometimes I will dry off my brush and I feather it out so that I can pick up a little of the, of the extra water. It controls a little bit how the paint moves, but like I say so often, I'm not really interested in, in controlling very much. I want it to kind of guide me as I go along. So the only thing I'm really having in mind at this point is variation. I, I want to do some shapes that are not all the same. And like I said before, you can do shapes that are the same. There's no hard and fast rules about this. We're here to just have fun with this process of creating and and that's really all there is to it. I'm not I'm not aiming at trying to do something for a client at this point. I'm just seeing what comes through in, as I paint. And I run my fingers through my paint, so we're going to make the best of that and make something out of it. And sometimes it doesn't work when I try to make something out of it. That's okay too. So I've got a few things going here that I'm enjoying. Sometimes I like what the painting's doing before it dries very much, more so than after it dries, but that's what camera filters are for. You can bring that color back up if you lose some of it. I've got a massive amount of water here that I want to sop up a little of. I'm going to use that technique I showed you already where I grabbing a little bit with the brush. But I'm, right now I'm just thinking I wanted to have a little green over here because you know there's green on the other side and it just feels better to me to have a little bit of it in both, both areas. That's looking fairly decent, and, and even if it isn't, that's okay with me. I'm going to move to my trusty hair dryer now to speed up this drying process, because we all know how interesting it is to watch paint dry. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. So I've got the paints dry, that first layer of painting. At this point I could come in with some more paint or sometimes and often I switch to a pen to finish up my paintings. Whatever speaks to you is the right thing to do or mix it up. Try one thing one day and try another thing the next day or the next moment. You can do more than one painting at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this, this piece of art. Uh, see where it goes because I never quite know. Of course, I've got I've got a cat right here in, in front of me. You can't see her, but she's she's joined me in this process. And there's always that desire to throw an animal in my work. 
I don't know what it is about it. I, I'm just not satisfied when I just have plants. I mean, plants are awesome, but there's something about putting a sign of life in something. So that's normally what I end up doing. So I'm gonna go ahead now. I'm gonna add some black line work. I'm really scribbly with my line work and that's just the way I like to do with lines so sometimes I tighten up a little bit. Um, see now I'm going to talk about something here. There are things going on in this right now that I do not like. I don't like this shape but here's the deal. I'm not done yet so I'm going to just let that be there and I'll come back to it and address it later or it may end up being fine with me as I move along things change in how I see things, so it won't matter to me about that possibly as I go along here. Just keep that in mind when you're working that it's not a done deal, you know, you can just keep going. So look what's happened here. We've ended up with a cat. You may decide you want to do a dog, or maybe you have a butterfly in here. All perfectly good alternatives to a cat if you hate cats. I don't see how you could hate cats, but you know, some people really don't like cats. The other thing that's happening with me while I'm working is I'm sitting off to the side of my drawing while I'm working so I can't actually see right over the top of it what I'm getting. Of course the cats are most of the time grumpy in my work so no need to stop that now. This could be a good example of how not being concerned about a scribbly flower, because it won't really matter as I go along, it'll be insignificant to what I'm doing. Making a little tabby cat here. Lots of lines. So this cat's looking at something. I'm going to come in with some white pen now, crossing my fingers that this pen works. White pens are kind of challenging because they clog easy and run out of ink and whatever they do, they're, they're not the most reliable. So you can see by that first line that it didn't really come out the way I wanted. Usually what I do is, as you can see by this piece of paper, is I test it out over off the artwork and then come back in on your artwork to finish it off. Just a little bit of color on these characters. They don't need a lot. It sort of kicks them off.
I'm getting close to calling it quits on this. I need to sign it. There's always that. I highly recommend that you put your name on your artwork just because so people may want to find you and they won't know who you are if you haven't put your name on your artwork. Let's see, what else? Well, I'm going to call this done today. I could keep going, but I really don't see any reason to keep going at this point. Every time I do a piece of artwork, I learn a lot, and this was no exception. I don't necessarily always know what I'm learning, but I am learning a lot. And it's more about, for me, the process of it happening. And as I shared with you guys during this process, I have negative thinking coming up when I'm working. The thing that's different for me at this point is I don't do anything with this thinking. I know it'll just come and go, it'll pass through. I can just keep working. And it's okay if it doesn't turn out in a way that I want. If what we're doing here is enjoying the process of painting, we're learning to paint, we're playing around with paint, and we're seeing where this this inner spark is taking us. And that's a state you kind of go in and out of, or at least I do, where it fluctuates in the process. Sometimes I'm just all up in my head thinking about what I'm painting. Other times I'm completely unconscious of what I'm thinking. I'm just present with the paint moving. It's all good. It's all good. You can just keep going no matter what's coming up for you and hold it all really lightly. I have to add another bird. I also need to put cheeks on these new birds because that's what I do. That made all the difference, those little birds I just added. And I put a few dots in that flower. I still don't love that flower and I still don't care. So that's all I've got for you today. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'd love it if you share it with people you think might get something out of this. And leave a comment below. You can contact me at terryrunyon.com. I'll see you soon.